bringing big ideas and critical opinions in Southeast Asia. Hey, this is Arlene. Hello, this is Grace. And you are with us on our Durian Hit. But today we are going to discuss on a topic that is relevant for today. Because guess what? Today is fasting. Start, is fasting the start of a Ramadan month? Exactly. And then uh, all the Muslim uh, are out there uh, did a lot of shopping <laughs> for the past t- uh, few days. And today is the first day. So we'll be sharing a lot of uh, uh, the elements and also experiences when it comes to fasting. Grace, have you fasted before? Yes, I have. <laughs> for Actually, for a few <laughs> years. Uh, just to learn the culture and uh, how people do practice this fasting uh, uh, towards the Ramadan season. So, when we talk about the month of Ramadan, of course, we were associated with Muslim and the idea of fasting. But the idea of fasting itself is actually very universal. It is. Anyone can do it. Either you're Muslim and non-Muslim. And because of that, uh, we will be speaking uh, an, uh, an activist from the Philippines. She's a Muslim Filipino from Mindanao. Her name is Jasmine Diok Sulik. And she will be sharing with us on hashtag fasting challenge. Uh, it's actually by uh, this organization, uh, this campaign called Friends Beyond Faith, where yes. they try to promote uh, the, uh, the, the activity of fasting for all faiths. Uh, so, Jasmine, hi. Hi, Arlene. So you're all the way there from Manila, I suppose? Yes, but, but I'm actually from Manila. I was born and raised here. Uh, I'm, I'm not from Mindanao. I, I was born and raised here in Manila. I see. But, yeah. but culturally, you are, re- you are from the southern Philippines, right? Yes, yes, yes. My family. My family is from the southern part of the Philippines. Most of the Muslims here in the Philippines came from Mindanao. Mm. So tell us more about this interesting campaign, hashtag uh, fasting challenge. Well, um, as part of the Young Southeast Asian Leaders, I was at the U.S. Embassy in Singapore Youth for the Young South Bend last April in Singapore. So the main theme of the uh, of the fall of the new media and the different social issues that we have in our respective countries. What prompted you to uh, start this particular campaign? Because since the topic was about new media recently, last March, there had been um, negative negative incidents in just like what happened between the rebels and in the in Mindanao, the Muslim rebels in Mindanao, and some government actually increased tension between the Muslims and the Christians. And in addition, the is early have the Chapel Hill shooting. So with what happening in the social media and how the music is somehow and I see it kind of about the gap between the between the youth from different religions and faiths. So what what should people do during uh, the fasting so, month? Well yeah. Since um we've been seeing a lot of negative their faith relationships and social media, so I was thinking why not highlight first the positive relationship to neutralize this incident. It's like whenever the media portrays something about interfaith relationship, it's always about someone killed someone or there's a bombing. So why not start with highlighting the positive re- relationship between them and the friendship that actually grew between them. So this social media campaign, the Real Faith, has three components. We have a workshop that aims to different youth or youth representatives that and uh, just talk in one day and do the fast challenge together and then the second one is a social media campaign that is composed of the hashtag challenge and at the end of Ramadan hopefully we can launch on FBF and finally we would also have the friendship corner and we can show tours and their realizations so for the interested participants we are actually targeting Think that non-Muslims Muslims are required to fast, so we would want to we would want to highlight the component or universal thing that everyone does. And since um, the social media campaign went to be viral, we have to do something that could actually attract people and find it. The ALS bucket challenge became successful because the artists and and then a lot of the um. 
felt how hard it is to be one who has an ALS. And for Australia, they also have this research challenge in which to so the so they're refugees from Myanmar. So what they do is the challengers have to eat the same ration that is being given to these refugees for them to realize that they've been really blessed and then they would donate to the organization. So this past challenge, we have yes. universal thing. So Muslims fast during Ramadan, Christians fast during get the sea seizures, some fast for a certain cause, like they do hunger strike just to prove something mm-hmm. that they can so if we think of it, fasting is actually a common ground for everyone. It's just that we have different reasons to do it. So we thought, why not do this thing for a common cause, which is for charity? Mm-hmm. Oh, so that has the very good motivation, uh, the message behind doing mm. this fasting challenge. So uh, we also can see from the, the postings that you uploaded from the, uh, the Friends for Faith that uh, mm. there are procedures that you can do. You can like the Facebook page and that eventually yes. it goes to help out the, the children in the Philippines. <coughs> so uh, yes. do you have any certain like uh, number of people that you are expecting to mm. uh, participate for this challenge? We're for now we're actually 100 challengers here in the Philippines, but this is actually all over ASEAN. We're encouraging our the ASEAN network to participate because the donation or the sharing of this feature is actually exclusive for Philippines. Like for example, if we're working with the World Merit, so what they do is they're going to channel the donations to their organization and then probably they could organize their own street child party or something that is for less fortunate, which is really the act for Ramadan. They ask Ramadan for for remembering how blessed we are. And if not, if you would be able to survive the fasting, we are asked to to give to the less fortunate. And that is exactly what's happening here in the hashtag fasting challenge. So it is basically for everyone. It doesn't need uh, they don't need to be Muslims to participate. Yes, yes. Actually uh, actually the main target here are the non Muslims because Muslims already fast during Ramadan, so it is not actually Right. Mm-hmm. What Muslims have to do is they, they have to so I thought of this campaign because I was thinking that ASEAN integration is already coming and Philippines has this culture of different stereotypes about Muslims. So I was thinking that if we have this fasting challenge and they have tried this just one day in their whole existence, once they get to meet another Muslim, they wouldn't find it really awkward to interact with them, but they would be excited to to share what they had during the hashtag fasting challenge and it would somehow build rapport and an easier way to build friendships right Mm -hmm. anyway we'll take one short break when we return we will discuss more with Jasmine Dioxulik on why fasting man is not just for Muslim alone but for all the durian heat bringing big ideas and critical opinions in Southeast Asia Hey, this is Arlene. Welcome back. This is Grace. And of course, you are with us again on our Durian Heat. And this time we talk about uh, the month of Ramadan, focusing on fasting. And in the Philippines, uh, the campaign by Friends of Faith, uh, Friends from, um, sorry. <laughs> Friends Beyond Faith. <laughs> Friends Beyond Faith. <laughs> campaign by Friends Beyond Faith has started a uh, hashtag fasting challenge Mm -hmm. for everyone to uh, participate including non-Muslim or especially Um, non-Muslims my question to you uh, Jasmine when it Mm -hmm. comes to fasting what is the key element for a good fasting uh, a good day of fasting What, what do you really need for the fasting challenge um for especially for the non-Muslims who 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 is like the first time for them to do this kind of fasting, we are going to give them a fasting buddy in which this person would remind them to wake up for pre-dawn meal, gives them some tips on what to eat, and then if they're breaking the fasting, we would also have someone to remind them that some um, like dates or something minimal could be used to break the fasting. After, that's the time you get to eat bulk of it. 
So it's like we have a fasting buddy, as we call it, for everyone who's going to fast for the fasting challenge. Mm-hmm. What is the challenge that you would face uh, as a first-time faster? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so just like how all Muslims fast during Ramadan, what they have to do is, of course, like the FBF Facebook page to get to know more of the campaign, and then there's a tab there and sign up and it will direct them to register online then after that you have to pick a fasting date from June 18 to July 18 so it's just one day from June 18 to July 18 2015 where you will fast from sunrise to sunset so fasting with no food and no drinks Mm -hmm. and after that you have to share your fasting experience in social media account your your Instagram account, um, just make sure that you use hashtag fasting challenge with every post that you make. And then if you're successful and you survive the fasting challenge, you can challenge two of your friends to join the fasting challenge. Same goes with the bucket challenge that you have to challenge two of your friends after you do the challenge. Mm. So the concept yeah. is like the bucket challenge. Um, but, yes. But I want to know what kind of challenges that they might face uh, during the time that they fast. Would they have uh, lack of energy or something more than that? That they need, uh, At least they can have uh, a better expectation of what they would face. Definitely, since this is a fasting challenge, they would get hungry. They would have somehow um, lack of energy compared to how they were before but then it would also drive them to realize the different importance of whatever we have now like for example the water because everyone's asking me this is really hard how can (laughs) I fast how can I survive the day without even drinking water so what I just needed to say to them is that this is actually done for charity to have a first hand experience of how the less fortunate of day work so what I have to say is if a street child becomes thirsty or me is it that um, the food is already or the water is already available to them because you know insects somehow very like they attack people because they're very hungry and they ask for the drink that you have in your, your hand then and there so it's somehow first hand again so what really what really is it to be hungry and be thirsty and you don't have any resource to quench that thirst or feel that hunger mm-hmm. so what are the so, tips that are you have you been uh, giving out so far so we've been we've been saying we've been posting things about um, the benefits of fast from, from doctors actually we're working on it to make it an in, to make an infographic so basically it's about it is really beneficial to the body because we make our body to digest everything that is left because we've been eating the ideal the ideal interval for food is like we eat four hours in between but then most people eat even if they're not hungry yet so <laughs> the food haven't been haven't been digested so this is a way for our body to rep- and then and give them how digest these foods that they're left and also of course you're going to fast you have to you need to eat the pre-dawn meal as we, as we call it in Ramadan we call it suhor so before doing the fasting challenge you're asked to, to um, a large amount of Food during the preparing challenge and then after the celebratory meal as well but then you're advised to eat just a little bit first so that your body wouldn't be wouldn't be surprised or wouldn't be shocked with the food that you've ingested and then later on that's the time that you can eat already mm-hmm. and is this open to non-Filipinos as well for those who are living outside of the Philippines Yes, um, I've, we've actually um, partnered with different um, youth groups in Indonesia, in Malaysia, in Indonesia, in Malaysia, and hopefully as well in Pakistan, hoping to get more on the Muslim countries. Mm-hmm. Okay, this is the target of this are non-Muslims. But actually, there is a mechanics for those who wouldn't be able to survive the fasting challenge. 
So let's say, for example, they didn't really survive the hunger and the thirst that they cannot, they feel they're gonna, uh, they're gonna give in to the hunger and thirst. They have two options, either to donate or and share a meal with the sea child. So, say for example, at lunchtime, they cannot take it anymore. If they really have to bake the fasting, so the food that they would have sacrificed for the day would be given to that sea child. And then, not just really feeding the sea child, but sharing a meal with them, sitting with them, stories. And hopefully, by that, they would be really blessed with what they have. So, in a way, uh, what do you look forward usually being a Muslim during the Ramadan month? Well, as a Muslim, for me, this is the best month. This is the best month, best month, all months in in Islam because this is the time that we get to mingle with family. I mean, we we eat together, we break the fast together, we get hungry together. <laughs> So, and then we pray together for Tarawi prayers, for Tahajjud prayers. So, this, this is really a big month for, for us. Mm-hmm. And do you, do you have a typical Filipino cuisine that you, uh, do you eat during uh, the breaking of fast in the Philippines? Yeah, yes, actually, and, uh, the Filipino must here have different cultures depends on what tribe they belong to but I am a Maganda now so we always uh, it's, it's somehow it's called sindo, Sindol Sindol <laughs> so it's like um, a hot porridge but a hot version of the Chindol you have there so it's it something like, like chendol. that <laughs> Chindol I see it, is it the Chindol that we have in Malaysia is it similar it's kind of similar, but it has more ingredients, and I think it's it's hot, right? Ah, interesting. Yeah, so it's a hot version of it. It's a hot version and more <laughs> ingredients. <laughs> right, okay. <laughs> so, uh, after you break the fast, uh, after a sun set, uh, do you have any activities or uh, other than the family gathering? We pray in masjid for tarawih. And then, yeah, we read the whole book together because my family is kind of strict about, you know, practicing Islam. So we don't watch television. We focus more on the prayers. Yeah. Right. And for you, what do you look forward uh, personally during the month of Ramadan with your non-Muslim friends during the uh, hashtag fasting challenge? Well, I grew up in a non-Muslim community where I'm the only hijabi or only the Muslim in our class. So this is really very exciting for me because every time I fast, they would all how can you survive fasting? Uh-huh. It's really hard. Like, I'm a nurse and I go on duties. And then at the end of the day, right, it's like because you don't eat anything, your breath becomes, you know, faulty. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> so my friends would tease me about that, and then when I am for the fasting challenge, they were very excited about it. Although they were, they were really looking forward to that. That would be so. When it comes to uh, the hashtag fasting challenge, how they can get more information about uh, the activity and who they can contact to. And visit our page www.fb.com slash Friends Beyond Faith. There you can get a lot of information about the Friends Beyond Faith and there's also a sign up box if they want to join the hashtag fasting challenge. So all the best and thank you very much for joining the interview. Thank you so much, Arlene. Thank you, Dorian Asia. You're welcome.